Dr. W.F. Kumeyi every first and third Thursdays of every month in this 2024 season for a night of supernatural wonders. Come, bask in abundance in the mighty works of Jesus at 5.45 p.m. at any Deeper Life location nearest to you. You may just be a praise from your breakthrough. No turning back till the hand of God is upon you. Lord and Father, we thank you for this privilege you have given to us to come before your very presence. Thank you, King of Glory, for all the great things you've been doing in our lives each time we come. Today will not be an exception. We pray that the heavens will open and your blessings will come down upon us all today in Jesus' name. As we start now, O Lord, we pray that you will be with us and you will bless us. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You are worthy, O Lord, thou man of Calvary, to receive glory and adoration. You are worthy, O Lord, thou man of Calvary, to receive glory now and forever, now and forevermore. You are worthy, O Lord, thou man of Calvary, to receive glory and adoration. You are worthy, O Lord, thou man of Calvary, to receive glory now and forever, now and forevermore. To receive glory and adoration. You are worthy, O Lord, thou man of Calvary. To receive glory now and forever, now and forevermore. O Lord, thou man of Calvary. To receive glory and adoration. You are worthy, O Lord, thou man of Calvary, to receive glory now and forevermore. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. With our hearts full of praise. With our hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord, my God. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Sing it, Lord, we lift up your name. Oh, Lord, we lift up your name with our hearts full of, Lord, with our hearts full of praise. Be exalted, oh, Lord, my God. Hosanna in the highest. He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord, hallelujah, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, he is the Lord, he is Lord, he is Lord. 
Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He is Lord. He is the Lord. Oh yes, amen, he has risen from the dead, he is Lord, hallelujah, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, you are the Lord that changes not, you are the Lord that changes not. You are the Lord that changes not. Jesus, you are the Lord that changes not. Lord, you are the one that fights our battles. Oh, Lord, you are the one that saves our souls. Jesus, you are the Lord that changes not. Oh, yes, you are the Lord that changes not. Jehovah, you are the Lord that changes not. Oh, Lord, you are the Lord that changes not. Sing, amen, amen, rejoice, amen. Glory be to God, amen. Let us sing. Brethren, rejoice, amen. Glory be to God, amen. Brethren, sing. Let us rejoice, amen. Glory be to the Lord, amen. Let us sing, amen. Let us rejoice, amen. Glory be to God, amen. Brethren, sing, amen. Brethren, rejoice, amen. Glory be to God, amen. All glory, glory, glory to the Lord. All glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 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 blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I have found Jesus. Amen. He is able to do all things. Hallelujah. In my life. Amen. Jesus is able to do all things in your life. I have found Jesus. Amen. He is able to do all things. Amen. I have found Messiah. Amen. He is able to do all things. Hallelujah. Amen. He is able to do all things. That same Jesus. Same Jesus, that same Jesus, same Jesus, that same Jesus, same Jesus, he is the one walking today. Same Jesus, same Jesus, that same Jesus, same Jesus, that same Jesus, same Jesus, he is the one walking today. That same Jesus, same Jesus, that same Jesus. Same Jesus, that same Jesus, same Jesus, he is the one walking today. That same Jesus, same Jesus, that same Jesus, same Jesus, that same Jesus, same Jesus, he is the one walking today. Anywhere he went, he was doing good. Almighty he 
liar. He healed the leper. When the cripples saw him, they started walking. Even today, my Lord will do you good. He will do you good. Oh, yes, he was doing good. Almighty healer, he healed the leper. When the cripples saw him, they started walking. Even tonight, the Lord will do you, he will do you good. Anywhere he went, he was doing good. Oh, yes, he healed the leper. When the cripples saw him, they started walking. Even tonight, the Lord will do you good. He's bigger than all my problems. He's bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain. I can or cannot see. The Lord is bigger than any mountain. He's bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain. I can or cannot see. Jesus is bigger than any problems. He's bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain. I can or cannot see. The Lord is bigger than any problems that comes across our way. God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. Jesus is bigger than any mountain. He's bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. My God is bigger than any problem that comes across my way. God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. I'm not moved by what I see, hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I hear, hallelujah. I'm only moved by the word of God, hallelujah. And upon his promise, I take my stand, hallelujah, hallelujah, eh. hallelujah, eh. sing hallelujah. Amen, amen, sing hallelujah, shout hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, amen, amen. I'm not moved by what I see, oh hallelujah, I'm not moved by what I hear, hallelujah. I'm only moved by the word of God, hallelujah, and upon his promise I take my stand, hallelujah, sing hallelujah, eh. shout hallelujah, eh. sing hallelujah, amen, amen, brethren sing hallelujah, eh. shout hallelujah, amen, eh. hallelujah. I stand up on the word of God, the word of God is power. I stand up on the word of God. Oh, brother, stand up on the word of God. My dear sister, stand up on the word of God. I say I am standing upon the word of God. The word of God is power. I stand upon the word of God. Oh yes, you must stand upon the word of God. Oh yes, we must live by the word of God. The word of God is pa power in the world. There is power in the healing, power in the word of God, power in the salvation, power in the word of God, power in the 
deliverance power in the word of God 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 God cannot lie his word must surely come to pass he will never never lie God cannot lie, his word must surely come to pass. He will never fail you because he's not him. Jesus cannot lie, his word must surely come to pass. He will never lie because he's not him. Our God cannot lie, his word must surely come to pass. He will never lie because he's not a God cannot lie I tell you he will never fail you his word our God cannot lie yes he will never lie because he's not a man I will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. For the world Lord is on the throne. I will not be ashamed. 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 Amen. For the Lord is on the throne. I will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. I will not be. Brethren, you will not be ashamed. As you put your trust in this God. Because the Lord is on the throne, you will not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. It shall be well, it shall be well, it shall be well. It shall be well, the Bible says, it shall be well. It shall be well, it shall be well, it shall be well, it shall be well, it shall be well. It shall be well with your soul, it shall be well. It shall be well with your family, it shall be well. It shall be well, it shall be well. It shall be well, it shall be well, it shall be well. It is well, it shall be well, it shall be well, it shall be well. It shall be well with the church, it shall be well. It shall be well with our nation, it shall be well. It shall be well with your soul, it shall be well. I say it shall be well. Yes, it shall be well. Oh yes, it shall be well, it shall be well, it is well, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. It is well with me. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. Is it well with you? Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with you. Is it well with you? Yes, Lord, I believe it is well with me. Is it well with you? Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe it is well with me. 
I can see the finger of God rewriting my story, my story, my story, rewriting my story. I can see the finger of God. Oh, yes, my story, my story. Can you see the finger of God? Yes, he's rewriting your story. Oh, yes, I can see the finger of God. He is rewriting my story, rewriting my story. I can see the finger of God. Oh, my story, my story. Israel must go. Israel, go and tell Pharaoh, Israel, go and tell Pharaoh, Israel, go and tell Pharaoh, Israel, must go, Israel, must go, go and tell Pharaoh, go and tell Satan, go and tell sickness, go and tell problems, you must go tonight, you must be free today, the Lord will touch your life. The Lord will heal you now. Just believe in him. Go and tell Pharaoh. Go and tell problems. Tell that your sickness. You are free today. You are safe today. You are safe today. Israel must go. Israel must go. Israel must go. Goodbye, Pharaoh. Goodbye, Pharaoh. Goodbye, Pharaoh. Bye bye. We are marching on to the victorious city. Goodbye, Pharaoh. I say goodbye, Pharaoh. Bye bye. Goodbye, Pharaoh. Goodbye, goodbye, Pharaoh. Bye bye. Goodbye, Pharaoh. I say goodbye, Pharaoh. Bye bye. Goodbye, sickness. I say goodbye, sickness. Goodbye, sickness. Bye bye. Bye bye. I am marching on to the victorious city. Goodbye, sickness. I say goodbye, sickness. Bye bye. Goodbye, failure. I say goodbye, failure. Goodbye, failure. Bye bye. Bye bye.
Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this privilege. Thank you because you brought us together for a good purpose. And I pray that everyone here today will receive something that will transform his life, her life in Jesus' name. Make us mature. Help us to grow up. Give us greater understanding. Give us better understanding. Reproduce the face of Christ in every one of us tonight. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you. You can take your seats. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by each the elders obtained a good report. It's talking about faith. And number one, it describes faith to us. Number two, he now tells us those who had demonstrated that faith. And it says, by this faith, this kind of faith, the elders, the patriarchs, the people in the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, they obtained a good report. And then he tells us something that faith had done. Verse 3, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. What you're saying there is God created the earth. Everything we see, everything tangible, everything we know, in the universe and in our world, God created that. But then it says something. He did not use any material to create the world. The things we see were made of things that do not appear. And now he begins to make it personal. He's telling us of the people that had faith. Verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. He's telling us now, if you're going to offer anything unto God, like your gift, like your service, as a sacrifice, it has to be by faith. Otherwise, it has no value. And it says, hey, by that faith, he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaks. It says that the influence coming from Abel continues today because of faith. He still speaks. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He said in us the highest goal destination you can have is to please God in all things and at all times and it says Enoch did that and God was so pleased with him that he was raptured to heaven without seeing death and if we're going to take part in the coming rapture the catching up and the catching away of the church 
We must have faith in God. Now it brings to a periodic conclusion. It's still going through a long chapter, but now it comes to a conclusion of this introduction to faith in verse 6. And it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Look at that. Without faith, it is impossible for any man, any woman, any minister, any worker to please God. Without faith, he might have activity, he might have some devotion, he might be full of activities. I do this, I do this, I do that. Without faith, it's not just difficult to please God, it is literally impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe must. It's not an optional thing. It's not like I have activity, you have faith, this is my specialty, works, activity, running up and down, and I don't care about faith. You manifest your faith, I demonstrate my work. It says no. It's not like this or that. It is this central theme, the faith. Because it says, without faith, you cannot please God. He who comes to God to offer anything. He who comes to God to serve. He who comes to God to ask, to demand in prayer, must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder, them that diligently seek him. We're looking at an important area of faith tonight, and it is, this is the topic tonight, believing and receiving before seeing. Believing and receiving before seeing. Faith is so important indispensable, essential for a relationship with God. You cannot have relationship with God if you don't have faith. Faith is so important, essential, indispensable for Christian experiences. The experience of salvation, of sanctification, of the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Faith is the connection that makes us to have experiences with God. Faith is so important for our walk with God, day by day, living as Christ wants us to live, walking with God. Faith is so important for our healing and deliverance. There are Christians that will suffer a lot if they don't have this connecting faith for healing and for deliverance. Saved through faith by the grace of God, you are healed, you are delivered, and you experience miracles by faith. Faith is so important for our victory in battle. Satan fights. Sin will want to capture your life again. But if you're going to have victory over sin, over self, over Satan, over everything that comes against your Christian life here on earth, faith is central. Faith is so important for dominion over the enemy, the enemy of our souls will conquer. I said, I will conquer. And faith is so important for that. And for us to have exploits and fruitfulness. Exploits. Doing exploits for the Lord. Faith is important. Very essential. To possess our possessions. 
thank God, I will possess my possession. And if we're going to possess our possession, this is so important ultimately to enter heaven. For our entry into heaven, this is so important. Now, this is based and anchored on God's unfailing word. Here is where many people make their mistakes. They base their faith on their feeling. I feel good. I believe God. I feel terrible. I feel the pain. And where is God? That's the question they're asking. They are not basing their faith on God's unchanging, infallible, immutable word. Some people base their faith on their senses, the sense of touch, the sense of sight, what I see. Or some people base their faith, their faith on their thoughts, the way their mind is thinking. And that's why the faith does not work. Because faith is not based on what you see, on how you feel, or what you touch. Faith is not based on our imagination. I imagine, I visualize, uh, you know, something there, something there. Faith is not based on that. Faith is not based on earthly knowledge. The knowledge you get from the doctor, it says, that's what is wrong with you. And this one killed such and such. This one, you know, destroyed such and such. And that earthly knowledge does not grant faith. Faith is based mainly and centrally on the word of God. Faith is not based on human possibilities. It's not based on your emotional state or any tangible evidence. That's why it says in that chapter 11 verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God's promise, God's pronouncement, God's power, the greatest is greater than all those other things we have described. He said it, so I believe it, and I receive it, and I confess it, and I realize it, and I possess it. I believe before I see. I believe before I see. I believe before I see. John chapter 20. In John chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 26. John chapter 20, verse 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believe him. You know why Jesus said that? Thomas had said, Except I see, I will not believe. That's the principle of the world. Seeing is believing. But you know, in the Christian life, in our relationship with God, believing is seeing. That's why Jesus said, Thomas, you said you must see before you believe. Okay, come and touch. Come and put your feast on my side. And then maybe you can believe. Look at verse 28, Thomas answered and said unto him, 
my Lord and my God. Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Seen is believing. Thomas, that's the principle you're applying, and it's of the world. And when we talk about worldliness, that is worldliness. Except I see, I will not believe. That's worldliness. Seeing is believing. That's worldliness. That is operating by the ideals of the world. And Jesus said now, verse 29, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Believing before seeing. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet they have believed. Second Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 7. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by, tell me, and not by, tell me, you can see that. The Lord wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. And it says, for we, apostles, preachers, servants of God, we, workers, members of the body of Christ, members of the church, we, anyone that is going to walk with God, we walk by faith and not by sight. Look at chapter 4, verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen. That's faith. We're not looking at the things which are seen. I see this mark on my body. We're not looking at things which are seen. I feel this pain in my body. We're not looking at things which are seen. And I see this report that, uh, you know, the doctor just uh, gave me. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. It's terrible. We walk not by sight. We look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Once again tonight, we're looking at the subject, believing and receiving before seeing. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the expectation of faith through God's promises. Faith as expectation. The expectation of faith through God's promises. Number two, the expression of faith in God's presence. You have the presence of God. And so God is big. God is mighty. And you know he's omnipotent. You know he's omniscient. And you know he knows all things. And you know he's omnipresent. He's right there. And you're in the presence of God. And you want to express your faith. You express your faith with the understanding of the God that knows all things of the God that is everywhere, of the God that can do all things, and tonight he can do all things. The expression of faith in God's presence. Number three, the experience of faith by God's people. The experience of faith by God's people. Number one, the expectation of faith through God's people. Faith has expectation. You see, there are people that come to the presence of God and they have no expectation at all. They just come. I came last week, I'm coming this week. I came the other time, I'm coming at this time too. And they just come, there's no expectation. And because there's no expectation, Nothing ever changes in their lives. But as you come to the Lord, 
you come with the expectation of faith you will not be disappointed jeremiah chapter 29 i'm reading from verse 11 jeremiah 29 verse 11 for i know the thoughts that i think toward you says the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you to give me to give me to give you an expected end before you came in you expected something and before you go out you are given what you are expecting ah i lost your amen it will give you the expected end you look at the promises of god and you say on the basis of these promises this is what i'm expecting it will be done proverbs chapter 23 reading from verse 18 proverbs 23 verse 18 for surely for certainly without any shadow of doubt there is an end there is a goal there's going to be an achievement something will drop into your life tonight surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off. When you come to pray before the Lord, you say, I have expectation. Before you pray at all, before you feel anything different, before you see the solution, before you have the answer, before the miracle comes to you, you say, I have an expectation. And you can broadcast it anywhere. You have not even prayed. You are coming to prayer. And you are coming with expectation. And then you say, my expectation shall not be cut off. I am blessed tonight. I'm healed tonight. I'm strengthened tonight. Something is going to change in your life tonight. Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. Remember? Those who come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And he says, there shall be a reward. And thy expectation, tell me, tell me, shall not be cut off. Somebody shout amen. Why? we've been told over and over that our expectation shall not be cut off that you in particular tonight you will take the blessing of god home your weakness will be replaced with strength your need god will supply a change a mighty change will come in your family from tonight how do we have such expectation? Numbers chapter 23. I read from verse 19. Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Not that the son of man that he should repent. As he said, I shall he not do it. Has he ever said anything? That he didn't do has he ever given any promise that he did not fulfill whether he gave the promise to an individual 
or to a family or to a local church or to his church at large or to the nation of Israel as he said and shall he not do it as he spoke in and shall he not make it good behold I have received commandment to bless I have received commandment to bless a true pastor receives a commandment from God to bless God's people. The one who comes and is angry, fighting with the church, almost cursing the church, insulting the church, abusing the church, cutting down the church, contradicting the church and then when you come in by the time the service ends you are worse at the end than at the beginning the pastor is angry the preachers are angry and the unfortunate members are suffering that's not a true shepherd give me a good amen, amen. a true shepherd has received a commandment to bless he has blessed and Balaam cannot reverse it and Balak cannot reverse it and the prodigal son cannot reverse it and Jonah cannot reverse it he has not beheld iniquity in Jacob neither has he seen perverseness in Israel the Lord is God is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely, somebody help me shout, surely. There is no enchantment against Jacob. There's no enchantment against you. There is no black power, black magic against you. There is no evil tongue, evil eye against you. Neither is there any divination against Israel. As the Lord said, according to this time shall be said in Jacob and of Israel, what has God wrought is going to do something in your life. Faith expects. Faith expects God's word to be fulfilled. Here I come to the presence of God. And I want to pray. Before you pray, identify a promise of God. Something he has said. And base your expectation on that promise, not on how you feel, not on the energy and the loudness of the person leading the prayer, not on emotion, not on whether you are kneeling or standing, not on the shaking, and not on the, you know, things that some people do, clapping their hands or turning around or doing that. You don't base your faith on that. You look at a promise of God and then you base your expectation on that promise of God. It will be done. It must be done. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. The expectation of faith. This is how faith works. Jeremiah 1 verse 12 Then said the Lord unto me Thou hast well seen For I will hasten my word to perform it He will hasten his word tonight Hasten his promise tonight There will be a performance in your life tonight in Jesus name Ezekiel chapter 12 in Ezekiel chapter 12, reading from verse 25. 
for I am the Lord. You see your Lord? I will speak. And the word that I speak shall come to pass. He will speak to your heart. He will write the promise on the canvas of your heart. And it says, and the word I speak shall come to pass. It shall no more be prolonged. The promise of God for your life, it shall no more be prolonged. Somebody had a dream. And the Lord said, this is what I will do. And it came right out of the word of God. And since that time, you have been expecting this will be done. And it has not been done. But now God says, today. No more delay. It will not be prolonged anymore in Jesus' name. Verse 28, verse 28, Therefore say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. None of my promises be prolonged anymore. It will happen. Faith expects that God's power will prevail. Faith expects that God's promise will be realized. Faith in God, in the true God, does not expect him to fail. Do you expect God to fail? Faith in God does not expect Satan to be greater than God, higher than God, stronger than God. They will come down from your life. Faith does not expect that we see or we feel to be more real than the invisible God. I don't expect faith to say that that chair you're sitting on is more real because it's solid than the invisible God. The things that are not seen, they're more real. The air that we breathe, are you breathing? I'm asking somebody there. Yeah. Do you see the air you are breathing? No. no. What you don't see is more important than what you see. You cannot live by that chair you're sitting on. Even though you can see it, you can feel it, you can touch it, it's solid, you can pick it up because it's tangible. But it is not as important as the air we breathe that you cannot see. The things we don't see, they're more important. That's what gave Moses the victory. That's what gave Moses the power. Because he lived as seeing him that is invisible. And so, tonight, the expectation of faith will bring a performance of all the promises of God in your life. Whatever promise you are holding on to, whatever promise you are expecting to be fulfilled, tonight is the night of fulfillment. The expectation of faith will grant answers to every prayer. Before you pray, before you ever open your mouth, your expectation is, what I'm going to tell God now is going to be done. By the time we hear the final amen, I know it is so. That is faith. Expectation of faith will bring solution to all problems. All the problems you are bringing in tonight, all those problems are solved in Jesus' name. Expectation of faith will bring freedom. Freedom from all bondage. The chains are broken. The fetters are broken. And all the things that bind you, they'll be totally destroyed in Jesus' name. Expectation of faith will bring righteousness in daily living. 
it says go and sin no more you accept that you believe that and sin will not have dominion over you the expectation of faith brings power for your hour whatever is the challenge of the hour whatever is the difficulty of the time faith will bring power to overcome in summary of that point faith will bring the sufficiency of Christ into your life no need no lack no limitation in your life as you approach God by faith you understand that I'm expecting this to be done they'll be done in Jesus name point number two now the expression of faith in God's presence the expression of faith in God's presence now look up here for a moment let's say for example now you come to the presence of your father earthly father and then you look at your father knowing that you are in his presence and you say that I don't believe you I don't believe that that thing you said you will do it and your dad says do you mean I'm a liar well I didn't use that word but that's the implication and when you come to the presence of the Heavenly Father the way you express yourself will show the faith you have that you are expressing what you actually believe of your heavenly father the expression of faith in God's presence how do we express ourselves in the presence of God second Samuel chapter 7 verse 25 second Samuel chapter 7 reading from verse 25 in verse 25 it says and now O Lord God this man is expressing himself in the presence of God the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house establish it forever tell me what follows tell me out loud all together you say one two three go that's how you express yourself in the sight of God in the presence of God faith comes in the presence of God and all he's saying is you said you were healed do as thou hast said you said whosoever comes to you you will not cast out do as thou hast said you said I am the Lord that sanctify you do as thou hast said you say that your promise will no more be prolonged do as thou hast said when you come to the presence of God you express your faith by bringing the promise of God to him and saying do as thou hast said we're coming to first Kings chapter 17 the expression of faith the expression of faith chapter 17 verse 1 and Elijah the Tishbite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead said unto Ahab look at this as the Lord God of Israel liveth can God die tell me so Elijah said God cannot die and as long as God is alive as long as God the God of Israel lives before whom I stand in God's presence what I say now Elijah was telling Ahab I say as in the presence of God there shall not be dew nor rain these years but 
according to my word, is the expression of faith in the presence of God. When you, after you have prayed, then you talk to people, remember, God is there. Are you in the presence of God? And say, according to my word, this will happen. You will not say, I am dying. No help. No sustenance. No care. Nobody loves me. What are you saying? In the presence of God, bring out your faith and speak by faith the expression of faith in God's presence according to my word. According to my word, that word will be fulfilled. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Many people, Christians, they live in fear. They're imprisoned by fear. They're captured by fear. Their heart is seized by fear. You know why? They live in the presence of man. They live in the presence of, wo of a woman. And they think, that man can hurt me. That woman can injure me. They don't see their God. They don't understand, I am with you. Tell me the next word. Always unto the end of the world, the Lord is with you. And it's greater than that woman. And it's greater than that man. Anywhere you are, you understand you're in the presence of God. Because he goes with you everywhere. He will never leave you. And therefore you can say, fear not, as thou hast said. Do as thou hast said. And make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel. Was he in church? I said, was he in church? No. Was he preaching? No. You see, there are some people, they only declare the word of God when they are preaching. They only declare the word of God when they are in the house fellowship. If they go to somebody's house, a widow's house, and that widow has nothing, and the widow is crying, they start crying with her. I'm sorry. This is terrible. I'm sorry what you are going through. I feel it to the depth of my heart. Uh -huh. Exaggerating the problem. But Elijah, he go to that house. If you are a man, you are a man every hour of the day. If you're a woman, you're a woman every hour of the day. Okay, I said that to say this. If you are a prophet, you are a prophet every hour of the day. It is not that you are a prophet in church and then you are an ordinary empty person outside wherever you are. Anywhere you are, if you are a prophet, you are a prophet. If you are a pastor, you are a pastor. If you are a servant of God, you are a servant of God. In the widow's house, on the road, in the bus, anywhere you find yourself, a prophet is always a prophet. And so, in that house is said, thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. The barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she went, tell me, and did according to the saying of Elijah. 
that woman counted Elijah a prophet. Elijah is no more here. But thank God I'm here. Yeah. And if I tell you something, you know, familiarity brings unbelief. Yes, I understand. Family brings content over there. But familiarity brings unbelief. Because we're together. Because we interact. Because we know. That's how you used to say. That's the verse you will quote. Point one, point two, point three. Familiarity. Then you don't believe. Thank God tonight you believe. Yeah. It is well with you. Yeah. The prayer you pray today and the rest of your life God will always answer you she went and did according to the saying of Elijah and she and he and her house did eat many days and the barrel of meal wasted not Neither did the cross of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. I believe God. I said, I believe God. Uh, look at Psalm 16, verse 8. Psalm 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me, God's presence, because it's at my right hand. Tell me now. Say that aloud. Let Satan hear. That's what to say. That's what to say. This one comes, that one comes, that one erupts, that one is broken down. Your God is greater than that. I shall not be moved. Psalm 26. Psalm 26, verse 1. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, say it for yourself. Therefore, say it again, I shall not slide. I will not backslide. I said, I will not backslide. The same grace available for me is also available for you. The same power that upholds me, that same power upholds you. You will not backslide. Psalm 62, I'm reading from verse 6. 62, verse 6. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. He will defend you. In the day, he will defend you. In the night, he will defend you. And when you don't even know what may be happening, he will continue to defend you. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. What do I say? What's your expression of faith? I shall not be moved. Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Psalm 118. We're reading verse 17. Psalm 118. Verse 17, I'm waiting for you to open the Bible. You will possess this verse. You will experience this verse. You will express your faith according to this verse. One, two, three, go everybody. Verse 17. Typhoid fever will not kill you. Malaria will not kill you. And those six hanging out in the night will not kill you. 
And the thing suddenly to all the people, that one is gone, that one is gone. When I come back, I will still see you there. Say it again, verse 17. If, if sickness ever comes your way, if sickness ever knocks at the door, before you think of any other thing, you know, and before you even pray, before you even say anything to the Lord, before you express your faith in a verbal manner in prayer, you come here and you say, I will not die. I will not die. I'm looking at somebody there. I will not die. But leave. Your wife will not die. She will live. That your child will not die. He will live. That loved one in the hospital now will not die. But leave. You will not die. You will live and you will declare the works of the Lord in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 7. For the Lord God will help me. The Lord God will help me. Therefore, I shall not be confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Shame is gone. Reproach is gone. There is the expression of faith in the presence of God. Psalm 17. Psalm 17, I'm reading from verse 15. 17, verse 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I, I shall be satisfied. I shall be satisfied. When I awake, well, thy likeness, it will satisfy you. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27. Acts, chapter 27. I'm reading from verse 25. Acts, 27, verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Take away your sorrow. Wipe away the tears. Brothers and sisters tonight, be of good cheer. Are you carrying a heavy load? Be of good cheer. Is life endangered? Be of good cheer. Are you suffering pain in your body? Be of good cheer. Have you been defeated in the battles of life? Be of good cheer. For I believe God. I believe God that it shall be it shall be it shall be even as it was told me everything you have had tonight it shall be answers to your prayer it shall be yokes broken it shall be power for service it shall be faith expresses god's promise not man's fears not satan's doubts not enemy's threats not present circumstances not bodily pain not historical ideas not current trends when you come before god in prayer the only thing you express 
is the promise of God. Faith contains against fear. Fear will not hold in your life. Faith conquers contrary feeling. Whatever negative feeling you feel, you have, when you come to God in prayer, faith will conquer everything. Faith calms frightening thoughts. Somebody told you something, and it's a sudden fear. Move on to your face. Faith will calm those frightening thoughts. Faith corrects all false suppositions. Suppositions are superstitious. It happened to them like this, like this, like that. And there are some people that go to dig at the backyard of their houses. They're looking for generational causes. Superstition. Supposition. There's no curse upon the life of a child of God. And faith corrects all the false suppositions. Faith controls the fury of the enemy's fire. Nebuchadnezzar said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. What am I hearing? Is it true? That you will not bow to my idol? Is it true? You will not surrender your life to me? Is it true? You will not submit to my idolatry? Now, I'll give you another chance. When you hear the sound of the cornet, the dulcimer, and all the instruments of music of the idol worshippers, if you fall down and worship me, all right. But if you refuse, who will deliver you out of my hand? Faith controls and cancels the fury of the fear of the enemy. Some people cannot look up 